successful foreign visits. During the meeting, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inquired about the President's health and treatment. She also wished him of early recovery as he recently underwent a cardiac bypass surgery in Singapore. Prime Minister's Principal Secretary Mohammad Tufazal Hussein Mia and Secretary's consent to the President and Prime Minister's officers were present. Awami League President and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurated selling of parties' nomination forms for the 12th parliamentary elections. She also collected nomination form. The Awami League chief opened the nomination papers sale at the party's central office on 23 Bongobundhu Avenue in the city this morning. Party's Advisory Council member Kazi Akramuddin Ahmed collected the nomination form for Sheikh Hasina to participate in the polls of Gopal Ganj 3 constituency. The party aspirants can collect and submit the nomination papers from 10 a.m. on November 18 to 4 p.m. on November 21 every day. While talking to the media at the party's central office, the Awami League president called upon the countrymen to remain vigil and resist the persons who unleashed arson terrorism to foil election. Sheikh Hasina sought doa from the countrymen to hold fair and peaceful elections. She said the government can be changed only by vote and elections. জনগণের ভোটের অধিকার অনেক আন্দোলন সংগ্রামের মধ্য দিয়ে আমরা প্রতিষ্ঠা করেছি এবং আমরা চাই জনগণের এই ভোটের অধিকারটা অব্যাহত থাকবে এবং ভোটের মধ্য দিয়ে সরকার পরিবর্তন হবে অতীতে জাতির পিতা বঙ্গবন্ধু শেখ মুজিবুর রহমানকে হত্যার পর এই দেশে আমরা দেখেছি যে রাতের অন্ধকারে বন্দুক হাতে নিয়ে ক্ষমতা দখলে পালা চলছিল এবং অবৈধভাবে ক্ষমতা দখল করে বৈধতা দেওয়ার জন্য জনগণের ভোট নিয়ে ছিনিমিলি খেলা হয়েছে আজকে আমরা একটা গণতান্ত্রিক বিধি ব্যবস্থা আনতে পেরেছি আর্থসামাজিক উন্নতি করতে পেরেছি উন্নয়নশীল দেশের মর্যাদা পেয়েছি এটা ধরে রেখে সামনে দিকে এগিয়ে যাব আমি সবার দোয়া চাই দেশবাসী দোয়া চাই যেন সুষ্ঠুভাবে নির্বাচনটা হয় মানে মানুষকে যেন অত্যাচার করেই যেন এই বিএনপি জামাত তা আনন্দ পায় এটাই হচ্ছে সব থেকে দুর্ভাগ্যের বিষয় নির্বাচন বানচাল করার যদি কেউ চেষ্টা করে আর যদি এই অগ্নি সন্ত্রাস অব্যাহত রাখে তার পরিণতি ভালো হবে না যারা করবে আমাদের দেশের মানুষই তাদেরকে শাস্তি দেবে আজকে দিনে আবার এটাই আহ্বান যে আমাদের অনেক কষ্টের অর্জিত এই গণতান্ত্রিক ধারাটা যেন কেউ ব্যাহত করতে না পারে তাই দেশবাসী তাদের অধিকার ভোটের অধিকার তারা ভোট দিয়ে তাদের পছন্দ মতো নেতা নির্বাচিত করবেন যারা সংসদে বসবে আইন পাস করবে রাষ্ট্র পরিচালনা করবে কাজ এটা হচ্ছে জনগণের অধিকার এই জনগণের অধিকার যারা কাটতে চেষ্টা করবে যে এই জনগণের অধিকার যারা কেড়ে নেবার জন্য অগ্নি সন্ত্রাস করবে জনগণই তাদের প্রতিরোধ করবেন আমি জনগণের কাছে সেই আহ্বানটা জানাই Different political parties have started selling nomination forms to contest in the 12th parliamentary election scheduled to be held on January 7. Awami League Chatiyo Shamaj Tantrik Dol Jashud, Bangladesh Workers Party, Awami League, Trinomul BNP, Torikot Federation and Bangladesh Nationalist Front BNF have kicked off selling nomination forms in the morning today. On this occasion, officers of these parties have been abuzz with leaders and activists. Awami League President Sheikh Hasina formally inaugurated selling of her party's nomination forms. Later, nomination aspirants from different constituencies across the country started thronging Awami League's 23 Bongobundhu Avenue's central office. Awami League opened eight divisional booths to sell nomination forms. On the first day, leaders of different levels collected nomination forms. Jatiyo Shamaj Tantrik Dol Jashod began selling of nomination forms in its office. At the first day, Jashod President Hassanul Haq Inu and General Secretary Shirin Akhtar collected nomination forms, among others. Bangladesh Workers' Party President Rashid Khan Menon collected nomination form when the party began selling nomination forms in its office. Trinomol BNP started selling nomination forms in its office in the capital to contest in all 300 constituencies. Secretary General of the party, Advocate Taimur Alam Khandukar, inaugurated it. Later, nomination seekers of different constituencies collected forms. 
Bangladesh Torikot Federation also started selling nomination forms in its Thanmundi central office. Chairman of the party, Syed Nazibul Bashar Mais Pandari, inaugurated it by collecting a form for himself to contest in Chottogram 2 constituency. Bangladesh Nationalist Front BNF began selling nomination forms in its Purana Bolton Central Office. President of the party, S.M. Abdul, Abdul Kalam Azad, inaugurated it. Prime Minister's ICT Advisor and Center for Research and Information, CRI Chairman Shaji Wajid Joy, has termed BNP Jamaat as terrorist and militant forces, adding that there will be no BNP party and Jamaat in the country within the next 10 to 15 years. He said this at the 7th edition of Joy Bangla Youth Award Conference Ceremony at Sheikh Hasina National Institute of Youth Development at Savar today. Shaji Wajid Joy, also grandson of Bongobondhu, said whenever election comes, BNP Jamaat click resorts to terrorist activities and carries out arson attacks on innocent people. He said the amount of development that has taken place during the Awami League tenure has not happened in the history of Bangladesh. Twelve organizations in six categories were awarded in the event after scrutinizing more than 750 applications. Later, Shaji Wajit Joy presented the award to the Shadin Bangla football team and Kalakor in recognition of their contribution in reconstruction of the country after the independence war. CRI trustee Redwan Mujib Siddiq was present on the occasion. Maldives President Elek Mohamed Muiz and Vice President Hussein Mohamed Latif were sworn in yesterday. Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud attended the swearing in ceremony at Republic Square in Maldivian capital Mala on Friday evening local time. The President of Sri Lanka, Vice President of Seychelles, Special Envoy of China, Ministers of India, Pakistan, Turkey, UAE, Ambassadors and Representatives of international organizations were present on the occasion. After the swearing-in ceremony, the guests attended a dinner hosted by the President of Maldives. Earlier, the Information and Broadcasting Minister, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, arrived in Maldives' capital, Malay, on November 16 to attend the swearing-in ceremony. The newly appointed Foreign Minister of Maldives, Chief of Protocol, High Officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Bangladesh High Commissioner to Maldives, Rear Admiral S.M. Abul Kalam Azad received the Minister at the airport. Bilateral relations between Bangladesh and Maldives will be further strengthened by the participation of the Information and Broadcasting Minister at the swearing-in ceremony of the new President of Maldives. At least seven people were killed at various places in the country by the cyclonic storm Mithili. The deaths were caused by wall collapse and fall in trees. More than 1,000 houses in the coastal districts were destroyed by the cyclone Mithili. It also uprooted a large number of trees in various areas of the coastal belt. According to the Department of Agricultural Extension, Aman Paddy have also been damaged by heavy rain cases by cyclone Mithili. Mithili also disrupted transport and knocked off power in many areas after causing landfalls. People in the low-lying areas are suffering the most from the waterlogging problem. Stroke Cholot shook the Harie, Amyamar Puribare Rupore, Bojahoe Tarabonato, Push Pusher Cancer Hojuti, King Mamukir Cancer, Ottoba Hardy Rosuk, Bakolar Cancer, King Batip Prushas Costo, Airport Take, Jacuni Cigarette, Babiri Cargotamata Aspe, Agbar Holeu Nijikabushi Jikishkurun, a cigarette, Babiri Tikele Amar Kikoti Habe, Tamak Sharun Naji Majimati Ami Nijaki Prushnakuri, a cigarette, Babiri Tikele Amar Kikoti Habe. Stroke a cholot shook the hari, Amyamar Puribare Rupore, Bojahoe Taraburato, Push Pusher Cancer Hojuti, King Mamukir Cancer, Ottoba Hardy Rosuk, Bakolar Cancer, King Batip Prushas Costo, Airport Thicke, Jacuni Cigarette, Babiri Car got a Mataspe, Agbar Holeu Nijikabushi Jikishkurun, a cigarette, Babiri Tikele Amar Kikoti Habe, Tamak Sharun Aji.
Welcome back to News at 10 and we move on to international news. At least 50 people were killed when Israeli forces attacked the al fakura school in Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza, an official from the health ministry in Gaza told the AFP news agency. The attack on the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA-run school, happened at dawn, the official added. At least 28 Palestinians, mostly children, have been reportedly killed in an Israeli bombardment of Khan Yunus city in South Gaza. Meanwhile, five countries, including Bangladesh, have applied to the International Criminal Court ICC to investigate the situation in Palestine. The other countries are South Africa, Bolivia, Comoros and Djibouti. South Africa said it requested that the ICC pay urgent attention to the current dire situation in Palestine. Israel has been conducting indiscriminate attacks on Gaza by water, land and air since October 7. More than 12,000 people have been killed in Gaza so far in Israeli attacks. More than 4,700 of them are children. Around 200 Palestinians were also killed in the occupied West Bank during this time. From residential areas to hospitals, nothing is spared from the Israeli forces' rampage. Half of the valley's 2.3 million residents have fled their homes in the face of the attack. More than half of the infrastructure has been damaged, more than half of the educational institutions have been closed, the healthcare system is also broken. At least 45% of Gaza's homes have been completely or partially destroyed. According to the latest count by the Gaza Ministry of Health, only nine of the 35 hospitals in Gaza are currently operational. These are also not fully operational. Many hospitals in Gaza have been closed due to the energy crisis. Apart from this, there is an acute shortage of medicines, medical equipment and blood. Now some other international news in brief. A shooter opened fire on a psychiatric hospital in the northeastern U.S. state of New Hampshire on Friday, killing one person before being fatally shot by police. Honda is recalling almost 250,000 vehicles in the U.S. because their bearings can fail, causing the engines to stall and increasing the risk of a crash. Sam Altman, the Silicon Valley CEO behind the artificial intelligence power chatbots ChatGPT and GPT-4, has been abruptly fired by his company's board of directors in a major shakeup for the tech industry. SpaceX successfully launched Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built on Saturday. This is their second launch following a failed attempt in April that ended in an explosion. In a momentous achievement for polar aviation, a Boeing 787 Dreamliner operated by North Atlantic Airways has